Alright, in this video I'm going to be talking about what we do in Chapter 5, and that is mostly transfers of inventory and transfers of stuff. If you read through this problem, you will see that you have a transfer problem. Uh, basically, King Corporation is the parent, and he owns some percentage of Lee, and, uh, and Lee turns out to sell uh, merchandise up to King, and that's called an upstream transfer. And when I do these problems, I use a special notation uh, to just track the data, the relevant data, of the intercompany transfer. If you look at the very bottom, and I can't move my mouse there, but look at the bottom and you'll see S uh, colon dollar sign 75 percentage. That down there is the notation that I'm using, lower left of the screen. There it is, the mouse is highlighting it, great. Now that little hunk of data down there, uh, I'm going to just call it the, it looks like a fish. Um, the semicolon is the tail, and then there's a at sign, and it's the body, and then there's a, a semicolon, and that's kind of like the gills, and then there's an arrow, but yeah, notice that it looks like a fish. It just wants to swim away, and it's going to eat that $4 sign, and that's the G, elimination value. Um, yeah, and so I call it I called it something really cool last night, and I don't remember what it was. I think maybe, just whimsically, I decided to call it Transfer Fish Notation. Uh, let's go with that. I like the way it sounds. Transfer Fish Notation. The transfer fish that's on the screen now is for a different problem, so we'll be updating it to reflect this narrative. If you look above the transfer fish at those columns, that's all the information that you can store within a transfer fish. The year is optional in this case, and we don't write anything in for it. Also notice that I filled in an L. That stands for Lee as the seller. See where it says 75 in our transfer fish? That's where you would put the cost, but our problem doesn't give you the cost, so just leave it. Later on, I'll put in an X there as a placeholder. The narrative indicates that Lee sold the merchandise to King uh, for 100000 which we've already written down in our transfer fish. Uh, then notice it says 0.5, 50% was remaining in inventory, in the parent's inventory. 50% was unsold. So see how I just made that change? We got remaining inventory tracked into our transfer fish at 0.5, which is written kind of into that directional sign. Then we're working on... Well, notice that I have a 75 there on the left of that at sign. Um, the paragraph, the narrative doesn't explain that it's 75% is the cost. They don't give you the cost. Now you can e easily solve for the cost if you deal with all that stuff, or you can just put in an X because it's unsolved for. And there's no reason for us to find that information. It's just completely unnecessary. Now we're moving on to the gross profit, which is, in this instance, it's the gross profit percent of Lee, who sold the merchandise upstream, is 40%. So take 40% times that $100, that transfer price, and you got $40 in there. Now you, you, that's the gross profit, $40. Right there in the transfer fish, right after the gills, a little bit. Um, perfect. So now we've pretty much updated the transfer fish to include all of the relevant data of this problem. The one thing that is missing is the G entry, the elimination value. How much deferred gross profit we have. Right now there's a $4 in there, that doesn't make sense, but you take your gross profit times the remaining inventory at the end of the year, and that equals your G elimination entry. You take that 40 that's written in your right after the gills, uh, times the 0.5, which is in the head, and that equals $20. That's your elimination entry, your G value. Perfect. We just completed a transfer fish. And that's why the transfer fish is so cool. You just keep filling it up with information and it eventually just solves the problem for you, the G elimination value. Let me show you what a transfer fish looks like in notes, like in pencil. Uh, here is a scan. And for this problem, K owns 80% of L. Okay. We knew that notation already. Uh, and there it is. It says it right up in the narrative that I provided for you. Here's the transfer fish that I drew. L colon the cost uh, at $100,000, how much they sold their inventory for. Uh, then you got gills, or a semicolon, gross profit, 40. And you can see that I did the calculation for you up above, and I drew an arrow. And then I drew that cross arrow for the head, and I wrote a 0.5 over it. 
that's how you draw the transfer fish in your notes. Uh, I kind of had to hack it for the computer version because you can't draw an arrow and have a number up above it. So there's the transfer fish. Notice that when you take the transfer price minus the cost, which are both in the transfer fish, you get the gross profit, which is the next thing over in the transfer fish. Then, if you take 40 times 0.5, that equals 20, and 20 is the G entry that you make, which happens to be what the question is asking for. It says, uh, list the amount of unrealized intra-entity profit in ending inventory at December 31st that should be eliminated. That's asking for the G entry. But let's take this one step further. Let's draw all of the elimination entries for the transfer of inventory. The question doesn't ask us to do this, but we'll do it for the sake of good measure. The first elimination entry we do is the TI entry, which is designed to, to eliminate all of the intercompany sale. So we're going to debit sales to eliminate sales, and the value of sales that we eliminate is the transfer price you can see that in our transfer fish, that's why it's such a handy thing, uh, $100,000. And you credit COGS for the same amount, and that makes it as though the sale never took place. Now, because there was remaining inventory involved in that intercompany transfer that didn't sell, remember 50% was remaining, we drew that ridiculous transfer fish, and now we're going to need to use that transfer fish to find our G value and make a G entry to defer our gross profit. And our G entry was, see at the head of the transfer fish, it's $20,000. And so you, you, you debit COGS for 20000 And to balance COGS, you need to credit inventory for the same amount. And that will comprise our G entry. You're getting rid of inventory on the buyer's books because that contains gross profit. So now we've made our TI entry and our G entry, and that was all in uh, the year where the transfer happened. Uh, it looks like it was, they didn't even give you a year in the problem because they didn't ask you. But what about next year? Well, since this year you deferred the gross profit, next year you would presumably have sold what was remaining, the remaining inventory. And so next year, you're going to have to undo the deferral. You're going to have to recognize the gross profit. And we call that, a, that entry a star G, and I'll put it together here for you now. To undo last year's COGS, it's simple enough in our star G entry to credit COGS for 20, because we debited COGS up here for 20 last year. But with inventory, you can't just add back the inventory because you don't really have the inventory. You sold the inventory. And even though we eliminated that gross profit in the above entry, in that original G entry, the individual books of the seller didn't reflect that. That was just the consolidated books that reflected that elimination. And so at the end of the year on that individual's books, they, they locked the gross profit into retained earnings. And so in this entry, the star G entry, when we are debiting retained earnings, we're decreasing retained earnings because we want to get rid of that uh, gross profit which sneakily got locked into retained earnings. A few days ago, the Nobel Committee awarded the presently jailed Liao Xiaobo the Nobel Peace Prize for his long, noble, non-violent struggle to bring more human rights to the people of China. The Chinese government denounced the Swedes' decision to give the Peace Prize to Liao Xiaobo, stating that it runs completely counter to the principle of the prize and is also a blasphemy to the Peace Prize. It's kind of ironic when you think about how this year they gave the prize to a criminal of humanitarianism, and how last year they gave the Peace Prize to a criminal of false advertising. No doubt this news will be redacted from the internet in China, and someone not too far away will feel revulsion towards me for this joke. Uh, anyway, congrats to China for their very first Peace Prize. <laughs>